Welcome to the ASCO Guidelines episode of the ASCO University Weekly Podcast. My name is Steve Bronstein, and I am an assistant professor of radiation oncology at the University of California, San Francisco, and I have a focus on treatment of brain and spine tumors. Today we feature an ASCO guideline, Radiation Therapy for Glioblastoma, American Society of Clinical Oncology Clinical Practice Guideline Endorsement of the American Society for Radiation Oncology Guideline. The American Society for Radiation Oncology, also known as ASTRO, recently released an evidence-based guideline detailing the radiation therapy approaches for the treatment of glioblastoma. Glioblastoma, a rare high-grade infiltrating primary brain tumor, is widely recognized as particularly challenging to manage and is an almost universally lethal tumor in patients despite aggressive management with multimodal therapy generally consisting of combination surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. While there have been some notable improvements in survival outcomes for patients with glioblastoma over the past half century via numerous cooperative group trials, the current standard of care, which includes post-operative radiotherapy with concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide, reveals median survival times of 14 to 16 months. Refinement in radiation techniques, including optimization of both radiation treatment volume and prescribed dose, as well as technical improvements in radiation delivery and image guidance, have yielded more conformal precision targeting with greater normal tissue sparing towards improved outcomes. The purpose of these ASCO guidelines is to review current radiation practice in the treatment of glioblastoma and offer recommendations with regard to overall indications for radiotherapy, dose, fractionation, target volumes, and the role of re-irradiation. As such, an expert panel of radiation and neuro-oncologists was assembled to review the astral guidelines on radiation therapy for glioblastoma. After careful review through the appraisal of guidelines for research and evaluation to instrument, the panel offered recommendations and endorsements as follows. Fractionated radiotherapy remains the standard of care, demonstrating improved overall survival for the vast majority of patients with modest to good performance status and is generally combined with chemotherapy and should be administered as soon as is safely feasible, typically on the order of three to six weeks post-surgery. When combined with radiation therapy, concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide further improves overall survival and progression-free survival without significant additional adverse effects such that patients can maintain quality of life. There does not appear to be a role for routine addition of bevacizumab to standard therapy. The addition of other systemic therapies such as EGFR targeted therapy or checkpoint inhibitor targeted therapy remains investigational. Thus, radiation therapy with concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide is considered standard of care for patients up to age 70. The recommended treatment schema is 60 gray delivered in two gray fractions over six weeks. During radiation treatment planning, dose to critical regional brain structures, including brainstem and optic pathway components, should be maintained below thresholds associated with functional impairment. Reduced survival on the order of several months has been observed in older patients and those with poor performance status, such that less protracted treatment approaches should be considered. Specifically, for elderly patients greater than 70 with good performance status, radiotherapy is still recommended. However, hypofractionated approaches consisting of 40 gray in 15 fractions over three weeks should be strongly considered as there is evidence to support the superiority of this approach over conventional fractionation. Of note, a recently published cooperative group study showed superior survival and maintained quality of life in elderly patients receiving a hypofractionated radiation schedule plus the addition of concurrent and adjuvant temozolomide. For all patients with poor performance status, irrespective of age, hypofractionated radiotherapy alone, temozolomide alone, or best supportive care are reasonable approaches. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the ASCO University Weekly Podcast. For more information, be sure to check out ASCO University's quarterly e-learning series on ASCO guidelines coming in 2017 by visiting university.asco.org. The purpose of this podcast is to educate and to inform. This is not a substitute for professional medical care and is not intended for use in the diagnosis or treatment of individual conditions. Guests on this podcast express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions. The mention of any product, service, organization, activity, or therapy should not be construed as an ASCO endorsement.